Hi, and welcome to this introduction to testing in the Atom SDK. Here, you'll learn the basics of testing in the SDK by building your own REPL file. This is a great start to begin testing the smart contracts you'll build locally. Throughout this tutorial, I'll go over each of the following topics. First, I'll overview what a REPL file is. Then, I'll go over some of the REPL-only built-in functions. From there, you'll set up a project in your local environment and you'll use it to do things like load environment data, load packed files, and call functions. Finally, you'll run your REPL file and see some of the important packed Atom SDK features like built-in error messages. Before starting this tutorial, it would be really helpful to complete a couple of the other tutorials from this series, including packed development on the Atom SDK and the loans project tutorial. If you haven't completed these already, Take some time to get more familiar with these topics before moving on. And if you're ready, let's get started. First, what is a REPL file? REPL files are used to load and run packed files using the SDK. REPL stands for Read, Eval, Print, Loop. This acronym refers to the idea that given a packed file, a REPL file is responsible for reading, evaluating, printing, and looping through the code as needed to both run and provide the output of the packed file. REPL files are a common part of Lisp-like languages such as PACT, and they'll allow you to quickly test the smart contracts you build. As shown here, a simple way to load a REPL file is from your terminal. Using your terminal window, you load the REPL file, which includes code that both loads and runs the packed file. The packed file returns data to the REPL file which then returns the output to your terminal window. This interaction is fundamental to how you will use REPL files in coordination with your packed files to build, run, and test your smart contracts. To better grasp the importance of the REPL file, it helps to look back to a tool you may be more familiar with, the online editor. While the online editor is a valuable tool to learn to write packed code, there's a lot that it does behind the scenes that it's now helpful to know a little more about. For example, many features provided by the online editor's UI are things that you'll need to code for yourself in local or production environments. Things like loading the packed file into the REPL, setting up the environment data and keys, and making function calls will all be done from within the REPL file. You'll complete all of this and other important testing features using the packed REPL only built in functions. Take some time now to review each of the functions in the documentation. And here's a summary of a few more common ones. For each of these, notice that transactions are commonly mentioned. Transactions are a common way to break up your code and organize your REPL files, and we'll go more into these shortly. As a short summary of what's shown here, you can begin and commit transactions. You can set environment data and environment keys. You can also use expect to evaluate expressions and verify that it's equal to what you expected. And finally, you can load and evaluate a file. Throughout the rest of the tutorial, you'll build a REPL file yourself using many of the functions you just saw. To follow along from your local environment, clone the GitHub project repo. Change into the test in SDK folder to begin working on this project. Open this directory in Atom to see each of the project files. As you'll see, there's a few separate folders available to you that you may recognize from earlier tutorials. The start folder provides a starting point with all the comments for every challenge. The challenge folder has the challenges from the demo broken out into separate files. The finish folder includes all the comments and code for the final application. And the loans folder includes the final application without all the comments from the challenges. I'll be working in the start folder, but feel free to approach this project however you like. The first step in creating a REPL file is to load the environment keys and data. This is similar to what you may be familiar with from the online editor. Rather than creating this data from the UI like you did before, you now need to program this information for yourself. Previously, you would create keys and key sets using the tool panel as shown here. You can view the code that represents your keys using the result tab. This tab is similar to what you'll be writing in your REPL file. To set up the environment, you'll use two separate built-in functions. Environment keys sets the transaction signature keys, and environment data sets transaction JSON data. Here's an example of using environment keys. As you can see, you type env-keys followed by a list including each key. 
And here's another example that shows environment data. Here you assign the keys to a key set along with their predicate functions. With that in mind, let's work through the first challenge. For this code challenge, you'll use environment keys and environment data to load the keys and environment data into the REPL file. Looking at loans.pact, I can see that I need a key set named loans admin key set. Knowing that, I'll also need a key to assign to the key set. I'll name it loans admin. I'll set the loans admin environment key like this. And I'll set the environment data here like this. As you can see, it's the loans admin key set followed by the list of keys, which in this case is just loans admin, and the predicate function, which for this is keys all. I now have the environment keys and data loaded into the REPL file. Before moving on, there's an important note I want to make about transactions. When working within REPL files, you can make as many calls to the packed code within a transaction as you like. Any command sent to the blockchain is a transaction, but a command can also have multiple calls. For instance, defining a module with module and creating its tables with create table calls. To successfully execute a transaction, you need to both begin the transaction and commit the transaction. This is done using begin tx and commit tx. It's important to use these functions to group calls into small transactions within your REPL file. Here's why this is useful. Any error that occurs in a transaction will cause it to roll back and fail to run. While it's possible to place all of your calls within a single transaction, this isn't a great habit to get into. This will make it difficult to tell where your file is failing and make it hard to continue testing. For that reason, be sure to break up your test files into smaller transactions. Transactions can be grouped together however is most convenient for your testing. Try keeping a logical order in your transactions to keep maintenance and readability simple. You'll see me doing that throughout the project. All right, let's get back to work. Pack files are not run by your computer directly. They're loaded into the REPL file and run from there. Now that you've loaded the environment data, you need to load the packed file into the REPL file. This is done using the built-in load function. Load loads and evaluates a file. The syntax for this is simple. All you need to do is type load, then specify the file path as a string. Packed and REPL files are generally kept in the same folder, so you usually only need to specify the name of the packed file. So what you can do now is type load loans.packed to load the packed file. After that, be sure to begin and commit this as a transaction like I mentioned earlier. And that's all it takes. Now that the packed file is loaded into the REPL file, you're ready to start calling its functions. Specify the module name with use, then call the functions from within the module. Here's an example of what that looks like. You have begin and commit transaction, and on the inside, use followed by the module name, and the function followed by its inputs. For the code challenge, you'll need to make calls to a few functions from the loans project. Here's a brief overview of each of the functions you'll call. Create a loan, accept parameters to add the appropriate information to each table needed to create a loan. Assign a loan, assigns a loan to an entity, and sell a loan, sells a loan, and logs details into the loan history table. If you didn't go through the loans project, take some time to work through the loans.packed file for a better idea of what's going on. So let's try the challenge. Here, I'll begin and commit the transaction. Within the transaction, I'll use the loans module. For this module, I'll call functions create a loan, assign a loan, and two calls to sell a loan. Next, I need to populate the function inputs. I'll run through this quick and feel free to add whatever inputs you'd like for your project. As you can see, I have a loan named Loan1 from Capital One and an amount of 50,000. From there, I assign an amount of 10,000 from Loan ID 1 to Buyer 1. Afterwards, I have a few loan sales between sellers and buyers for an amount of 2,000. And that wraps up this challenge on calling functions. After calling functions used to create, assign, and sell a loan, you can now read some of the data that you created. Similar to before, you'll be calling functions from the loans.packed file. Feel free to reference the previous challenge for guidance. Here's a brief overview of the functions you'll call in this challenge. There's read loan inventory, which reads all the loans from the inventory table, 
and read loans with status, which reads all the loans of a specific status. Call each of these functions from the loans packed file and provide your inputs as needed. Looking at the challenge, we see we'll need to begin and commit the transaction. From there, I need access to the loans module again, so I'll use loans. Next, I'll call read loan inventory with no parameters to read all the loans. After this, I'll call the read loans with status function on both initiated and assigned to get a list of loans for each of these statuses. You're now prepared to read from the data you created with your earlier function calls. At this point, if you've been following along, you completed the REPL file. Congratulations. The last step is to run the file from your terminal to view the output. Go back to your terminal and navigate to the start folder from your project directory. You can also go to the finish folder if you haven't worked through the solutions yet or if you run into any issues. From here, run packed. Finally, load the loans.repl file. You should now see an output to your terminal similar to the data shown here. Take some time now to view the output to see how it aligns with the code you wrote in the REPL file. As you'll see, this top section shows you that the keys and data were set correctly. Next, you'll see the loans.packed file load, the key sets defined, and some other actions. This here is the hash of your module, and here are three tables that were created by the loans.packed file. Finally, you'll see that each of the function calls succeeded as writes to the database. Then, at the bottom, you'll see the data you read back out. From here, you can experiment with changing the REPL or PACT files to see how this changes the output into your terminal. Before wrapping up, I want to get set up and play around with a couple of examples to show you an important feature available in the PACT Atom SDK. As you've seen, you can run REPL files from your terminal to test PACT code. Another valuable feature in the SDK is that it actually runs these files for you without using the terminal. This helps you spot errors from directly within Atom. Two features that help you spot these errors are the error highlighting and the error message. Error highlighting shows up as a red dot that includes the error. REPL files with errors in them will leave a red squiggly line under the file name. Aside from that, the error message will give you further details about the error source. These are both valuable ways to effectively test and debug your packed code. One way to view these features is to take a look at our packed examples repo. Clone this repo into your project folder. Change into the packed examples directory. And open it in Atom. Here you'll see many more examples of REPL files along with the smart contracts they're testing. Navigate to A to Z, Keysets, Keysets.REPL to view one of these examples. In this file, you'll notice the use of a new built-in function named expect failure. Both expect failure and expect allow you to test if the outcome of an expression is what you would have expected. On line 35, notice the line that states that it expects the real key set should fail. I'll leave it to you to study the code if you'd like, but you'll be totally fine if you don't quite know what's going on here. What is important is that you can tell that this test is passing because there's no error message or highlighting. To make this test fail, try changing keyset-real to keyset-carol. After making this change, the file name keysets.repl should now have a red squiggle under it, and line 35 should have a red dot next to it. Both of these indicate that a test is failing from within the REPL file, without you needing to run it in the terminal. To get more information, you can click the dot on line 35 and select the triangle to view the source of the error. Using this detailed information, you can better test and debug the code from within your packed smart contract. To understand exactly what's failing and why, it helps to look through both the packed and REPL files for more information. Take some time now to study the keyset example file as well as a few other examples to practice testing and debugging errors. And that wraps up this tutorial. Congratulations on completing this introduction to testing in the Atom SDK. In this tutorial, you learn both the basics of testing in the SDK and how to build your own REPL file. This is a great start to begin testing the smart contracts you build locally. From here, you can experiment with changing the REPL or PACT files to see how this changes the output to your terminal. Using this workflow, you can begin building and testing files for this and future projects to work on. So take some time to try those out, and when you're ready, I'll see you in the next tutorial.